Hey all, welcome to Shatrek. This is Raj here. Uh, friends, uh, earlier I had um, uh, made a video about the CTX series, one for CTX110, another for CTX130, both of which are wholly owned uh, therapies uh, in the pipeline of CRISPR therapeutics. Today I want to look at VCTX210, 211 and 212, which are all aimed at diabetes, both type 1 and type 2. And uh, this time I'm going to focus a little more on the immunosuppression aspect because in the CTX series, one of our viewers had commented uh, that the MHC1 uh, suppression uh, would attract natural killer cells. And um, yeah, I had uh, definitely registered that risk, but I mentioned it in passing because I felt that the strategies taken by CRISPR therapeutics were adequate to prevent natural killer cells from uh, you know, uh, damaging the modified cell. So uh, in this particular video, I'm going to focus uh, a little bit more on the immunosuppression to explain why uh, it's not going to be a big issue for uh, CRISPR therapeutics. And in fact, I think this particular template is going to be a strong point for the CRISPR stock because they can use this strategy in other types of cells for various other uh, situations. So uh, that's uh, one extra uh, point that I wanted to mention for you today. And as we get more familiar with the workings of the lead candidates in the portfolio and the mechanisms, and also if we look at their revenue capacity for each of these uh, uh, disease verticals, we'll appreciate the valuation of CRISPR therapeutics better. And friends, it's very difficult at any point of time to stay uh, on the same wavelength as the market because the market is the aggregation of different people's uh, point of view about the valuation of a company. And uh, it all comes from uh, them reading uh, different articles, getting different information from different sources. So it's never possible for anybody to be 100% in sync with the market in terms of valuation of a company. But the more you know about a company, that much more confident you would be so that you don't sell suddenly when the price goes down and then regret it if the price turns around and goes up immediately. So those kind of things can be better managed psychologically as well as in the market by having a better understanding of the company. And that's the reason why I'm doing this series of profiles on each of the therapies of CRISPR therapeutics. But before we proceed, I request that you consider subscribing so that we can reach our target of 5,000 subscribers. We are very close to it and you could just push us over the edge on that one. And if you're already a subscriber, then I request that you take the next step by pressing the join button and becoming a member of the channel to help us keep going. With that said, let's get started. Welcome back friends. Type 1 diabetes is considered an autoimmune disease. This is because in type 1 diabetes, the immune system mistakenly attacks and destroys the insulin producing beta cells in the pancreas. Insulin is a hormone that regulates the blood sugar uh, in, uh, and when the beta cells are destroyed, the body cannot produce enough uh, insulin to control the blood sugar effectively. In the ultimate stage of type 1 diabetes, there is no insulin produced in the body. So the autoimmune nature of type 1 diabetes means that immune system's response against the beta cells is the underlying cause of the condition. This is different from type 2 diabetes, which is basically characterized by insulin resistance and typically not associated with an autoimmune response. Managing type 1 diabetes uh, often involves insulin replacement therapy as the body is unable to produce its own insulin due to the destruction of beta cells by the immune system. The other aspect of the standard of care apart from insulin is a regular blood test in order to make sure uh, that the, uh, the blood sugar levels are uh, stabilized. If type 1 diabetes is not managed proactively, it can lead to hypo and hyperglycemic conditions where blood sugar is too low or too high. And uh, this in turn eventually leads to a lot of stress on the various organs in the body. It leads to degradation and, uh, degradation and failure of multiple organs over time. Uh, so it's essential to control type 1 diabetes and stabilize blood sugar levels. And this means regular insulin uptake based on the current standard of care. Earlier, Viasite had developed uh, pouches of cells, uh, beta cells that create insulin. But the patient had to be kept under immunosuppressive in order to prevent the immune system from destroying the Viasite pouch of cells. This is where Vertex decided to collaborate with CRISPR therapeutics to make immunomodulatory edits to the cell so that uh, they can evade the hu human immune system and persist for longer duration uh, in the uh, human body and continue supplying insulin. Uh, 
After digging around for a while, I gather that uh, two of the gene edits that help accomplish immunosuppression are the elimination of the B2M gene and the expression of the pro-tolerance programmed uh, death ligand 1 or PDL1, uh, about which we have spoken in the past, in order to inhibit T cell activation and the immune system. Let's look at this slide that I dug up from CRISPR Therapeutics. I think they presented it a while ago. Uh, and let me explain while I walk you through it. But first, let me uh, explain to you the action that plagues, uh, takes place in a, a type 1 diabetes patient's body. In type 1 diabetes, the immune system's T cells, specifically cytotoxic T cells, recognize the beta cells in the pancreas as foreign or abnormal due to the autoimmune response. These cells, T cells are activated to attack and destroy the beta cells. It so happens that beta cells uh, behave like any other cells in the body and express MH1C uh, molecules on their surface and B2M is part of the MHC1 uh, complex and uh, these MHC1 molecules present peptides derived from the beta cells proteins. In type 1 diabetes, the presentation of uh, beta cell peptides by MH1C can lead to the activation of cytotoxic T cells, uh, which then target and kill the beta cells. B2M helps the MHC1 complex uh, to load the peptide marker of the beta cell on the surface of the beta cell. So switching of the B2M would prevent the peptide display on the surface of the beta cells. This would mean that CD8 T cells will not see the beta cells. However, the absence or change in MHC1 uh, can attract natural killer cells which can use cytokines to kill the beta cells because natural killer cells are constantly monitoring MHC1 uh, and uh, they are looking for the absence of MHC1 and the peptide on MHC1. If they find either the absence or a, or a peptide, they attack. So, uh, PD-L1 has the ability to tone down the NK cells because when PD-L1 on modified beta cells engages with PD-1 on the T cell and NK cells, it can suppress the uh, ability of the NK cells to attack and eliminate the beta cells. We have learned this strategy from tumors because tumors do exactly these changes to persist in the body and evade the human immune system. So I think this approach will definitely work for CRISPR therapeutics. When it comes to CRISPR therapeutics, we need to search high and low to find the details of the edits, I mean specific details of the edits. Of course, they need to have their own uh, intellectual property protected. To me, this seems uh, this particular strategy they have seen, uh, taken seems like a solid shot at having immune resistant beta cells uh, that can reverse type 1 diabetes with the ability to evade the immune system and persist longer in the body. Now, if we look at VCTX211, it has an additional edit called HLA-EK, uh, uh, e, which is a knock-in and um, it, it is done to suppress the NK cell activities further. When CD94 slash uh, NKG2A on NK cell engages with HLAE uh, presenting a peptide, uh, it sends an inhibitory signal to the NK cells and this inhibitory signal counteracts the activation uh, signals generated by other activating uh, receptors on the NK cells, as a result of which the NK cells cytotoxic toxic activity and uh, cytokine production are suppressed. Additionally, apart from the uh, immunosuppression, uh, there are a few more uh, components added for proliferation of the beta cells by introducing MANF knock-in. Uh, in the context of uh, type 1 diabetes, where beta cells are targeted by the immune system, NA MANF uh, may have immunomodulatory properties that could help reduce the autoimmune attack on beta cells, preserving their functions and number. So friends, to me, um, if I want uh, an ordinary lay person to visualize this, so if you had seen the Robocop series, in the Robocop series, the, the robot has got um, uh, instruction that says no harm uh, should be done to a human. So when there's a situation where a human is threatening the robot and it has to protect itself, and to protect itself it has to kill uh, the, uh, the human, uh, the other logic in its brain which is fighting against it is saying that there's a prime directive that no harm should be done to a human. This is what uh, happens to the NK cells when it uh, encounters HLA-E uh, knock-in 
uh, in the beta cells. So uh, that's how it works. And um, uh, the MANF uh, counteracts the natural reaction of the person's body to kill all beta cells. So together, these two are important knock-ins uh, that have been incorporated in VCTX211. The strategy of CRISPR and Vertex is to have uh, VCTX212, uh, which is going to be a deviceless injectable therapy with further edits on VCTX211 so that it can survive within the body. Any way you look at it, compared to current standard of care, uh, which involves regular uh, insulation intake and blood sugar checking, VCTX series can be game changing. As per GR, uh, JDRF, which is a Juvenile uh, Diabetes Research uh, Fund, uh, the lifetime cost for a type, uh, type 1 diabetes patient is close to half a million dollars in medications. There are around 22 million people that live with type 1 diabetes globally. So we are looking at a large market. And under the Vertex and CRISPR Therapeutics deal, CRISPR Therapeutics has already received $100 million uh, upfront when it started the uh, collaboration. Another research milestone was recently achieved and um, uh, that that uh, happened in uh, second quarter of 2023 and it's going to trigger a payment of around 70 million dollars from Vertex to CRISPR Therapeutics uh, in uh, Q3 of uh, 2022. So the next earning release will uh, contain the 70 million dollars and additionally CRISPR Therapeutics will also be eligible for up to an additional uh, 160 million dollars uh, in research and development milestones. And apart from that, there is also royalties for any future products resulting from the agreement. So with a cash balance of around 1.8 billion at the end of Q2 2023, to me, CRISPR Therapeutics look like a healthy company. And now let us look at the charts to see what CRISPR Therapeutics is doing. Well, here, here we are in, uh, in the chart for CRISPR Therapeutics and each of these uh, candles are a one day candle. And uh, right now, CRISPR Therapeutics is at $45.39 as of the close of market on Friday. And that was a drop of around 0.77%. Uh, and our uh, MACD is um, bearish, and also our momentum is below average, and it has been falling. And as you can see, the recent high was 71.91, somewhere around 23rd of May 2023. Since then, we have fallen significantly. This share has fallen from really lofty heights and I'm just going to show you the lofty heights from which it has fallen. And uh, that is somewhere around uh, $220.09. Uh, and, uh, and that happened at around uh, 19th of January 2021. So that's where it was. And um, uh, if you look at the current uh, price of uh, 45.39, we can definitely see in the, we, we can definitely see that CRISPR has lost uh, a big time. And in terms of uh, the resistances, I can show you that there is a whole lot of resistance uh, available for CRISPR therapeutics. Uh, the immediate resistance is at 47.88, which it has to cross in order to move further. Their earnings is scheduled for uh, 1st of November, so there is plenty of time. Uh, we still have entire October to go through, so there is plenty of time, and there are some revenue estimates and um, you know, EPS. I'm thinking that uh, CRISPR should be able to manage most of that. but. I think uh, overall, if I was to take stock of um, CRISPR as a whole, we saw CTX110 and 130. They are absolutely fantastic and wholly owned uh, therapies of uh, CRISPR therapeutics. We saw the market size for those products as well. And we saw how it was superior to the existing standard of care, which is basically autologous and a uh, lot of uh, uh, CRS uh, cytokine um, uh, uh, toxicity happening in the patients. So they are the second line of treatment. And I, I believe that CTX110 and 130 will all become the standard of care as, as soon as they get approved. So that's my expectation based on my understanding. We also know that Exacel is coming for an approval uh, PDUFA is in December. So that's again another huge catalyst and a milestone for CRISPR therapeutics. Uh, and uh, on top of that, uh, we have VCTX uh, series that I spoke to you about and I explained how their uh, immunosuppressive uh, uh, edits are uh, pretty good and uh, they mimic what a cancer cell does in order to survive against all the human uh, immune systems uh, uh, attack. So. Uh, overall, I think it's looking absolutely great and with $1.8 billion at the end of Q2 2023 and uh, receiving around $70 million from Vertex for another mil milestone payment uh, for uh, VCTX. So 
I think overall, uh, I'm very uh, optimistic that CRISPR therapeutics is going to be a, a really lucrative share. It is a, it's a blue chip in the making. But from now until when it becomes a blue chip, there's a long way to go and there are risks also out there. And as I said, it's very difficult to be in sync with the market valuation of any given company. If you look at, uh, if you Google and see um, price uh, targets for CRISPR therapeutics, it's at various levels all over the place because different analysts have got different models and different uh, assumptions as a result of which they have a different price target. I am a regular retail investor like yourself. I have got limited knowledge and limited experience. And my uh, idea is that uh, CRISPR therapeutics should be close to $80 by the end of uh, this uh, year. And I'm basing that on the fact that uh, Exacel will get approved and that's going to be a big catalyst. I'm also basing on the fact that uh, we have uh, CTX110 and 130 in advanced uh, clinical trials and they are wholly owned therapies and they have got immense revenue cap uh, capability. VCTX210 uh, and 211 are also in advanced stages of uh, clinical trials in Canada. So they are also potentially in a stage uh, closer to monetization. So all these things put together, I am thinking that when ExaCells gets, uh, gets approved, a lot of people will start focusing on CRISPR therapeutics and there will be renewed interest. And that renewed interest is going to push us closer to $80. And that's my expectations. Uh, I would like you guys to put your uh, comments and let me know what you think about uh, CRISPR therapeutics. I get to learn a lot from our um, viewers as well. So I look forward to your knowledgeable uh, inputs in the comment section. Uh, with that said, uh, before I end this video, I would like to just remind you, please join and become a member of the uh, channel and um, uh, help us uh, keep the lights on. And also, if you are not yet subscribed, at least consider subscribing because subscription is absolutely free. So please subscribe and help us reach 5,000. You can do one of the two things today to help the channel. Thanks and have a great day. Bye for now.